Hey, everybody. We are live. So we got a very special live stream today. So personally, I've been focusing a lot on vlogging. Luckily enough, it's a big focus for my 2021 goal of uh, kind of combining belonging and YouTube. And so I wanted to seek out an expert on belonging for real estate agents. And that is where Jeremy Blayton comes in to the, the picture. Oh. He uh, he does a lot. Of, yeah, that, this guy, this guy, right? Right there. He does a lot of blogging and he actually uses it for lead generation, which is pretty, pretty rare. You know, not a whole lot of agents are actually using it for lead gen. And he's kind of combining that with his YouTube videos. And he's got a killer strategy, which I want to emulate moving forward. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to bring him on and we can pick his brain and uh, hopefully you guys can learn something today about belonging as well. I'm Jeremy, how you doing today? What's up? Yeah, man. How are you? <laughs> Fantastic. It's, it's beautiful weather here today. Um, much cooler than it's been lately. So it's in like the mid 60s versus the 85 we had two, three days ago. Yeah, it's starting to get chilly here, man. It's 60, uh, like 61 today. So I want to thank you for putting on pants today. I know that was a lot of effort to to put on some some grown up shirt. clothes. And <laughs> shirt. Yep. Yeah, that's 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 you know that's pretty big uh, during these pandemic times. Um, I changed out of my sweatpants just for this this live stream as well, even though you can't see them. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. So tell us a little bit about your 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 success with blogging and what what's your strategy with blogging. Yeah, so you know, it goes back many, many years ago. Back, gosh, probably 2008 or so is when I started really getting into blogging. Um, there was a network back then. I, I was doing research. We, no, let me back up another step. So my father and I had a website that we were using, and it was doing okay and was getting us business. And hey, we did 137 transactions. Woohoo! We were awesome. And then all of a sudden the market crashed and we're trying to find ways to generate business when we market down to doing 13. And so we're trying to figure out things to do. And I did a bunch of research online and, uh, you know, different things. And I went, you know what, I need to get a, these things added into my website. And so we had an old advanced access website at the time. I called them up and started asking, hey, what can we do to get these things? And they're like, uh, we don't have those options. So I started doing a little bit of research, found a company called Active Rain, and um, it was one of the first blogging platforms that was out there for real estate. Um, and I dove in full speed ahead to it, uh, and I was pushing stuff out back then. <coughs> I was doing so well with it, actually, that Active Rain in 2009 into 2010 reached out and said, hey, you know what? Would you want to come work for us? And so I actually worked with them for about a year and uh, traveled the country teaching people blogging, how to use websites uh, to generate leads, build their business and get an incoming lead generation source to you that you're not having to sit out there and work. Um, I don't have to run advertisements to generate the leads. Uh, they call me directly. I mean, I, I had one um, about 20 minutes before we got on this call today, who she'll be here on Tuesday with her fiance from New York and they're here for 10 days and they want to buy. Yeah. And, that's you, know, you know, that's becoming more and more the norm for me um, where the content I create is generating those leads. Yeah. So that's what, that's what I really love about it because with YouTube, it's like passive lead generation. You make a video. I have videos I made three years ago that are still ranking on the first page of Google, still generating me leads. And blogging is very similar, right? It's it, You can do the exact same content, just in a different format. And again, it can just generate you leads on autopilot, um, which which is what I, what I really love about that. And you know, my understanding of the Google algorithm is that today it's very similar to the YouTube algorithm. And just kind of combining video with blogging is um, just a great, great formula for that. So you're not still blogging on ActiveRain.com, though, are you? Um, very rarely. Uh, unfortunately, back right after I – actually, the reason I started there, um, they <laughs> said, you know what? We're out of money. What are we going to do? Let's start charging our agents. And uh, they actually hired me to help try to recruit agents to want to pay the money and continue doing it. Uh, but one of the things they did is all of the old school people were giving a grandfathered in account for free. Um, so because of that, I still have mine there. And when I create content on that network, it does go out publicly where consumers can read it. 
And so I will use it from time to time still to put a post out there. Um, but I all what I use it for mainly these days is to help generate traffic back to my website that I own and control um, that I built and, and is there for me. And, and I use it for backlinks and to get um, you know domain authority from ActiveRain because it's something that's been around forever. Um, it has over a million posts of content on it. So Google looks at it as somewhat of an authority when it comes to real estate things. And uh, because of that, it does help me in that sense. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a good strategy there. Yeah. So for anybody who's kind of watching and uh, don't doesn't know that term domain authority, Google has um, over 200 factors that it looks at when it's ranking an article. And one of the factors is big factor is going to be the domain that is published on. And you could publish an article on your brand new website. And then somebody else could publish almost the exact same article on Huffington Post, the Wall Street Journal, or one of these big authority websites. Their pay, their post will rank first page of Google. Yours will not because they simply have more credibility. That domain has more credibility and authority with Google than yours does. And it's it's a huge game to build up your domain authority of your website in the eyes of Google. Um, and it's not really a game that I think a lot of people want to play. Like it's it's a challenging game. I mean, so how long? How long? So yeah, I mean that's that's the advantage of posting on a blogging platform like Active Rain or Medium.com, is that you're leveraging their domain authority and their credibility with Google to get your articles to rank. But you've got a different strategy, right? You're trying to build up. You're trying to play that game and build up your domain authority of your website, right? Yeah, so actually what I'm doing is I'm using places like Active Rain, like um, Medium, you know, in, in other places where I can create content similar to what to what I'm doing. So if I post something on Active Rain, I'm not going to post just take copy usually the same article and put it there. Um, although I can and we'll talk about that um, probably I'm sure at some point when we discuss a little bit with Canonicals. Um, which is one way you can do it, but I want to get even more authority out of it. So what I'll do is say I write a post about a neighborhood. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'll go over then to active rain and I'll write something about that neighborhood, maybe put, and then put a link or two to some of the sub index pages on my website and, and, and going back a second on the whole, this whole strategy. Here's the thing I'll, I'll say with this before we get too far into it. This is not a get rich quick stream scheme. This is not a silver bullet. You can't do this for two, three weeks or, or even two, three months and go, man, why am I not getting any business? This doesn't work and it sucks and I don't want to do it and walk away. This is something that takes some time. Um, you know, you're looking at if you can do it on a regular basis, maybe a year to two years till you really start to see good results. Um, I, I'll be honest, my sites right now, are just now getting to that point where it's starting to get that business for me on a regular basis. Um, you know, and, and I've been back selling now for five years, but really for about the last two, two and a half, really focusing in on this strategy in uh, building it up in 2020, especially um, I've really dove deep into doing it and I'm starting to really see the results. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, building up your own pages domain authority. That is a long game strategy right there that could literally take years. Um, so kind of one reason I'm really doubling down on blogging moving forward is earlier this year, January and February, I published a couple articles about living in a few cities that are nearby me. And I didn't even realize that they were ranking on Google until just a few months ago. And it took maybe about six months but they're ranking number one for living in Severna Park, living in Arnold, Maryland, moving to Arnold, Maryland, relocating to Arnold, Maryland. And they're actually in on the first page of Google and within the top five for just that city's name. You just type in Arnold, Maryland, Severna Park, Maryland. My article, um, A Local's Guide to Living in Arnold, Maryland, is in that the first page of Google for that. And once I realized that, I was like, holy cow, that this this is working. It just takes time. And I, I've, I've done some research, and that's what a lot of people say, that it can take six to nine months for you to publish an article before it really can like reach its potential and actually rank on Google. Well, and, and the other thing is this. 
you know, giving you a little background on myself. So after I worked for Active Rain, I then went to doing full web development for about four and a half years and built hundreds of websites for real estate agents all around the country. And, you know, I still build a couple here and there for people. Um, but here's one of the things that people misunderstand. Um, they call me up and, and they're, they're saying to me when they call me, well, I want to rank number one for Myrtle Beach Homes or Myrtle Beach Real Estate. And that's, that's, that's great. And that's an awesome goal to have. And yeah, I'd love to see that. But the reality is this. At the end of the day, I cannot compete with Zillow. I cannot compete with Realtor.com. I cannot compete with Truly, Remax.com, KellerWilliams.com, Caldwell, and I could keep going on with all of these big name companies that have millions of dollars to throw at ranking for these things. That's what their job is to do. The places like Zillow, that's their job. They have a room of 20 to 30 people that are way smarter than me sitting there creating content building those backlinks, building the authority to make it so that when somebody searches, they're hitting page one. So I can't go after those. But what I can do is I can go after smaller terms or what they call the long tail keywords. Um, you know, long tail keywords make up 80% of the searches that people do. Okay. The other part is this people who are searching, they may start. And this is the story I share with people all the time. Malcolm, say you and your wife decide, you know what? We're going to buy a house in Myrtle Beach. So you go, you come on vacation, you visit, you go, wow, we really love it. You go home. When you go home, you're typing in homes for sale in Myrtle Beach to start, right? Because you don't know, do I want to be in Myrtle Beach? Do I want to be in North Myrtle Beach? Garden City, Myrtle's in, where on the beach do you want to be? You don't know. So you plan that next trip to come down. And when you're doing that first search, you're usually 12 to 15 months out from making a decision to buy a house, okay? So you come back again six months later, and as you're here, you and your wife go, you know what? We really seem to like we've got a son. You know, a Carolina Forest seems to be a good area where we might want to move. So when you go home now, you're no longer searching homes for sale in Myrtle Beach, which is kind of the big overall arching area for here. You're thinking of now let's search homes for sale in Carolina Forest. So you've narrowed it in some, right? But you come back again because you know there's 35 communities in Carolina Forest and 35 different subdivisions with thousands of homes. You want to get the best neighborhood that fits in your price range. So when you come back again that next time, you're now narrowed in. You know and you find the neighborhoods and you basically narrow down to one or two neighborhoods that you want to search in. So when you go home now, you're searching instead of homes for sale in Myrtle Beach, you're searching homes for sale in the farm at Carolina Forest mm -hmm. or homes for sale in Waterbridge. You're now one to three months out for making your decision to buy. You're in this small little thing. And when you find me on those specific terms, that's when you're ready to buy. I can go for the long, the, the big ones that overarching and never get there. And luckily if I show up on page five for the searches, or I can go for homes for sale in Carolina Forest put mine in the top three spaces and get a lot more leads from it. And so mm -hmm. you can do that and create those for any type of a market, whether you do it by neighborhoods, um, whether you do it by gated home communities, homes with a pool, there's all different ways to go about creating those long tail terms. And you can go in those, those you can rank on usually within two to three months once you have a site kind of going and do really well with. Me ranking for Myrtle Beach real estate on page one, it is never going to happen, and I'm okay with it. Right. Yeah, so you're really talking about the content strategy, and it, it seems like to me the same the, – the, the content strategy that works for YouTube, a lot of that – there's a lot of overlap with blogging. The same um, keywords that you go after with YouTube, like living in, moving to, cost of living in, top neighborhoods in – you know, those same keywords will also work for blogging as well. Um, and I, yeah, my my website, um, I don't have a very high domain authority. You can actually get an estimate of it. And my estimate is about 13 out of 100. But some articles that I've written about specific neighborhoods do actually rank on the first page of Google when somebody types in that specific neighborhood. And so I think, um, like, what's, what's some of the, the best keywords uh, I guess for you to go after. So I guess you just said pools in pool, pool homes. It all depends on on your area and what you have. And in each person's is individual. 
um, in specific. So, you know, you just have to, the way I explain it is this, this is the easiest way to figure it out. What are the questions that people are asking you on a regular basis when you're talking to a buyer and they're telling you, you know, the lady who called me earlier today, this right here, I just took her notes. Here it is. And this is what she wants. She wants a home, two to three bedrooms, and she wants to be in Little River or North Myrtle Beach, but she wants a home that's all on one floor. Yeah. So right there's a term that I could create content on. Single story homes. She wants a home that's under a certain mm -hmm. price point. So I could create a blog post about homes that fit that to collect leads like her. Or I could do homes in specific areas that she's asking about. Those are right there. I, I could from just one call with this lady, I could create four or five main keywords to really focus in on and target for doing it. You know, and so it's it all depends. Um, down here, one of the big things that we're getting right now is people want to, especially with COVID, they wanted a home with its own pool so that they didn't have to be locked out of not going to the pool when it's 100 degrees here in the summer. And so homes with a pool has done very well for me these last few months, um, you know, because I rank fairly well for it. Homes in gated communities you can do, um, they're it's endless. I mean, if I go and look at my site, um, you know, and actually, let me just see here a second. I'm going to, can I share a screen? Yeah, yeah, let me go for it. I'll show you. So take a look at this, guys. I want to show you how um, this is the IDX section of my site um, where you can see some of the different terms that I go after. So these are homes in a neighborhood, and you can see I've created it by price points. I've created it by number of bedrooms for that neighborhood. Um, I've created other terms for other neighborhoods and things. And there are tons, there's 575 pages of content here alone. And, and one of the big form factors that Google uses to determine domain authority and to determine how a site should rank is the number of pages of content. So the IDX side of it, the home searching function that people are using that alone has 575 pages of content in addition to the pages that I've written of neighborhood um, areas, um, the blog posts that I've written hundreds of, and all of those pieces together help my site to rank so well. So let me ask you this. So for you, um, your, your big strategy is kind of focusing on like pool homes and whatever neighborhood. Are you actually writing articles for that, or do you just have like a little blurb and then you're just showing the properties for no, that? So let me just see if I can find that one here. Let's see. What I've been focusing on is writing huge articles, really good, um, really valuable articles. And I've had a lot of success getting those to to rank in, in search, not necessarily just one of my IDX pages. And that's kind of what I'm really focusing on is writing these really, really valuable and really pretty long articles. Most of my articles are at least a thousand words. Um, some of them I may even start write, writing even longer than that. Yeah. And so you can, when you're creating this content, you want to make sure that you're creating something that's got some length to it. Mm -hmm. um, because there, there used to be, um, you know, you could get away with doing, you know, a 200 to 300 word blog post and it would do okay. But everybody started doing those because it was easy and quick. I mean, I could knock out a 300 word blog post in about five minutes with pictures and everything and links and be like, woohoo, it's going. So lately what I've been doing is my posts are more well over a thousand words, some of them pushing even 2000. Um, but you know, like I said, they want to see one of the things that Google wants is they want to see pages of content, um, number of pages of content. So right now, when I go in search, um, my site right now, my page has 20,500 pages that Google has indexed for me. That's huge. So you're saying that's one of the factors for domain authority is how many individual pages that you have on your own website? Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah, let's, yep. let's jump back to domain authority real quick. Um, sure. actually, let's, let's answer um, Michelle's question here. She says, 
Jeremy, uh, you plug in the IDX pages. What about posts? So are, are you making pages or are you making blog posts? I guess it's, it's not much of a difference in the eyes of Google, is it? So, <laughs> yeah, in, in WordPress, there's basically two parts. There's pages, which are the evergreen pages of content that sit forever. Posts refers to blog post content, which is going to be in a chronological order. IDX pages are something a third tier to that basically michelle um they're completely separate but what i do then is once those idx pages are created and their indexing is i will then when writing a blog post i will link back to it or i will link to it on the evergreen pages of content um and, and that will help um let's see what she's saying here i use instagram and basically do micro blog posts and i then blend one or two together, thus not creating the content for the blog. Yeah, you can do that and, and create it, but you need to put the content on something you own. Instagram is has no indexes on all yeah. of their content. I've never so, seen an Instagram post rank in, in Google so, search before. So it won't rank. Same is true with Facebook. Um, it, they put what's called a no-do follow on their link. any links that you put in that stuff. Same is true, really, of YouTube. Um, YouTube doesn't do it. Um, as well as Pinterest, LinkedIn, and basically all the social networks because those sites are such high ranking authorities already that if they allowed it, it would totally just mess things up completely right. everywhere. So let's jump back to domain authority. So, so yeah, so you mentioned do follow and no follow link. So for anybody who's not kind of familiar with those terms, a big factor in Google's algorithm to rank a page or a, a domain is how many other websites are linking to their to that domain. And that's what kind of gives it credibility. And when you create a, a link, let's say on Facebook, um, the, in the HTML on the back end, they can either say, hey, we want to give this website credibility or we don't. And it's, it's either a do follow, which the link gives your site credibility or is a no follow, which the link does not give your site credibility. Generally, in my experience, any website that you can post your own link, like as on YouTube, as a comment on a form, any of those types of links generally are no follow links and they don't really help your credibility, not really for your domain authority. But any um, time you can get a owner of a website to link to your website or link to an article on your website, that typically is a do follow link and it is kind of like a vote of confidence for your website and gives you a little bit more credibility. Yep. Does that all, does that all sound right? That That's pretty, pretty accurate. The one thing I would add is this though, on just about all of these platforms, one of the things that you do get a new, a do follow on just about all of them is in your profile. Yeah. They will give you the ability where you can put a website domain in, make sure you're putting it and put, put your website there. Um, you know, if not, you're missing out on that opportunity. Twitter will allow it. LinkedIn will allow it. Um, you know, all of them will give you at least one link from it there. I think realtor.com will allow it as well. Yep. Um, maybe even Zillow.com and a lot of homesnap.com, mm -hmm. a lot of those real estate related websites. And one thing, so in the whole SEO community, there's a process called link building where people are actively trying to build links to their websites to build credibility. But one thing you gotta be careful about, and, and like the more credible the website is as linking to your website, the more credibility gives your website. One thing you have to be careful about though is in this practice is that if they're gonna, Google's gonna look at who is linking to your website and what type of content they have. So if it's like a video game website linking to your real estate website, that's not really going to do anything. Poodle.com, for example. Uh, Poodle.com, you can create a do follow link in the profile to your website. Google's going to look at that like Poodle.com, what the heck does that have to do with real estate? So that's not really going to give you any credibility. And my understanding is that Google's really cracking down on this, this type of practice. It's kind of a gray hat um, practice of building backlinks. And yeah, you don't want to do it. Spammy of backlinks, then they could actually penalize your website. And I am completely guilty of that. I've been blogging on and off since 2014. And I used to do all the black hat and gray hat um, nonsense to build backlinks on my website. And I'm not, I've pretty much cut all of that out these days. Do, you, do you, I don't know if you remember, it's been probably 
I want to say eight, nine years ago, but JC Penny back in the day was in, in its heyday, probably eight, 10 years ago, I'd say they were ranking on number one on Google for just about anything you wanted to buy. It didn't matter if you were looking for curtains or women's underwear or pots and pans, they were showing up first in the Google searches over and over and over. They had spent a boatload of money. They hired a, a company to come in and help their website to rank. And they didn't know anything about it. They basically washed their hands and said, just do it and make it go. And this company did. And they're going, wow, it's great. So here, have some more money and do it. And then all of a sudden, one day, Google realized that these people were doing link farms and had built all kinds of bogus sites that were out there with links to pages inside JCPenney. And when Google found it, they slammed them. And everything that was on page one dropped to page like 13 or more. And it basically destroyed JCPenney and all of their online community because they were no longer on anywhere to be found in a Google search. And so you want to be super, super careful. Um, you know, you can go looking for places and people go, oh, this is great. And I can get links. It's not a good idea. And, and here's the other thing, too, um, when you're creating them. And actually, let me. I have a whiteboard so I can even do All this. All right. Let's see it. All right. So here's the thing that people want to do most of the time is you have site A and you have site B. Okay. Let me make my A so you can see it. All right. So you have site A and you have site B, right? So what people are doing is they're they're getting a lot of times these links where where I can't do this for that. A is linking over here to B, right? And then what happens is B links back to it. And so you have this reciprocal link thing going on. And back in the day, it wasn't a big deal, and people were going and doing it. And so they were doing this, and it was basically just creating this circle of links back and forth between the two. And when that happens, Google says, forget it. We're not going to do it. So instead, what you need to do is you need to do something more like this, where A goes to here, this goes to here, this goes to here, and you need to involve more sites in it, where A is linking to B, B is linking to C, and then C is linking to A. When it's something like that, Google's not going to follow it. So like if I gave you a link on something that you wrote, Malcolm, and I linked to your Living in Annapolis page because I was talking about something. And um, I may say people living in Annapolis are tired of being there and they're all heading to Myrtle Beach. And I put a link to you there. Okay, great. Then we would get Christina to link to me. And then you would link to Christina. And so that we're not all going back and forth. And you want to make sure that when you're linking to those things, what I want is I, I, I like getting the links to my my overall main domain, MyrtleBeachHomesBlog.com, that's great. But I would love instead if somebody's writing an article about gated home communities and they link to my page that's in there, which is like Myrtle Beach Homes Blog slash home, gated homes in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, that page getting links there is even better. Because you, if you can get links to the deeper in stuff in your site, it's even better. And Google then will go and crawl them and index that stuff more. Um, you know, and so that can help you tremendously as well. But what you don't want to do is like they did back in the day. And I know many real estate companies here in, the, in Myrtle Beach where I would go searching and seeing where their links were pointing. And I'm like, why the heck does this guy have a link from a dairy farmer in Idaho? And it's like, what does that have to do with real estate? And they, you'd find this page where it was just called links and there'd be 400 links there. For this website just listed boom 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 and i could click into every single one of those things and i would find on that the place where it linked it a link back to that website and so because people were doing those link farms google went and cut all that garbage out because they knew it was no longer with it same thing's true with keyword stuffing people used to go in and when you're writing a blog post at the bottom of it they allow you to add the keywords of what the post is about and so people would add, it's kind of like almost like the, the tags in YouTube, right. um, you know, where people are going in and they're adding 50 tags and most of them don't have anything to do. You know, I've written a post about a gated home community and instead I'm putting links there for luxury homes and, you know, all, all kinds of other garbage that has nothing to do with it. So Google said, forget it on that as well. So they're not paying attention to it. 
But the, the big thing that I would, would say the easiest thing to kind of explain to people that if they're trying to get started with this and doing it is number one, figure out a strategy of, you know, your five to 10 things that you want to really rank for. Pick some things that are long tail keywords to start. Start on those simple ones, creating and figure out a strategy to do each one and create content on a somewhat regular basis. Um, now, one of the things I think that would be important to mention here is how often should I be putting content out? You know, people all the time are like, well, how often should I blog, Jeremy? How often should I do it? It's just like your YouTube videos. If unless you're somebody who can create on a consistent basis three to four pieces of blog content every week, once a week is fine. In the beginning, push out more to get it going and then you know drop it down. I'll be honest, I haven't done it. I, I'm writing a post right now for my site. And the last time that I put a post out, let me pull it up here. I'll tell you the date. It's I'm ashamed to say it, August 10th. So I'm two plus months now since the last time I put out a blog post. So yeah, let's jump into actually formatting the blog post. I think a lot of people, I kind of wouldn't even recommend that you guys play this whole backlink games and even blog on your own website. I'd kind of go, you can go with Active Rain. I think they have a paid membership now, but you can blog in that platform. Medium.com is a platform that I use and it's a free platform that you can blog on. I've had a lot of success with that. Let's talk about, the actual actually formatting it and what the Google algorithm looks at. Cause my understanding, I've been diving pretty deep into this is that today, like the Google algorithm today is very different than it was five, 10, 15 years ago. And today it's very similar to the YouTube algorithm where it's performance based. They actually, cause Google now has Chrome browser and they have Android. And so they can track users and how they interact with websites and the entire user session on um, on their browser. So they have tons and tons of data about your website. And my understanding is like one of the first things that they measure is the click through rate. If they rank your article number one on Google, are people actually clicking on it? And then they track, you know, when they click on the article, what do they do next? How, and there's a couple of different signals that they look at that are positive signals. That means that the, as a good user experience for the user on your article, um, and there's a couple that are really bad at um, signal. So somebody, if they pogo stick, if they jump onto your website, then immediately bounce back out uh, 10 seconds later and then go down to the next result on Google and jumps into that website. That's a terrible signal to, to Google. Um, so what, yeah, what, how do you format your articles, I guess? And do you have any strategies for that? You mentioned keyword density. Is that still something that you focus on today in 2020? I do when I can, yeah. but it, I don't uh, – honestly, nowadays, I write when I can and push out what I can with it. Um, you know, if I have time to sit and kind of format through and do the, the keyword density and that kind of stuff, you can. Um, you know, jump back five years ago, and, and well, before you get – one thing I, I, I will disagree with you. Get your own domain from the beginning and put your stuff there. Because here's the thing. In, in the long run, you don't own medium.com. You don't own activerain.com or any of the other platforms that are out there. You don't. So get your own domain. Put it on your own hosting where you own and control your content. That way it's there so that down the road you're not running into the same, you know, right now, you know, right before we jumped on, you were saying, well, I just don't know what I should do. You know, a lot of my stuff is ranking well in medium and it's not here, but it's the consumer still three things they want to do when they visit your site. They want to search homes. They want to know what's my home worth and they want to know how's the market. Those are the top three things every consumer wants to do in real estate. So you want to create content around that in a place where they can get to it. I can't do that on your medium. I can click a link or two and go off to another spot. But as soon as I leave medium, I'm now on the Lawson group.com or living in Maryland. And I don't know this person. This isn't where I started. I'm, I trust medium. I trust this place. So if you build it from the beginning where they're learning and trusting you, I would do that. But anyway, so keyword density five years ago, three to 5% on a post. So if I wrote a thousand word post, I need to get the, my keyword in there 3% of the time, right? So you basically what I used to do back in the day is I would write it. You'd make sure you had it in the first sentence of the first paragraph, 
the last sentence of the last paragraph, and then I would use it throughout the post. I would add, make sure it was tagged on my photos and on you know in the description and that stuff, um, on the videos I may put in, all that stuff. They would all have that in there. And then what I would do is I would go back through the article. You know, here in the English language, we like to use descriptions instead of using a term over and over and sounding too robotic. And I would go back, find some places where I said it, this, him, hers, theirs, them, theirs, take those out and put back in Myrtle Beach real estate or whatever the gated homes in Myrtle Beach or whatever the term was and make it work that way um, to do this. She's Sorry. making fun of me because I uh, I, I over analyze my background trying to get it just right. Yeah, she she can do that. that that's true. But, um, you know, I would create that and go through the whole process of doing it. Nowadays, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to just simply go back. I'm going to create my content. I'm going to make sure that I use it in the first sentence, in the last sentence, and a couple times throughout. And I'm going to hit publish and let it go. Like, you know, I, I'm working right now on a blog post about termites in Myrtle Beach. You know, it's a real sexy topic to talk about, but it's something people deal with. And, you know, one of the things I would suggest if you're trying to figure out what content to deal with and what to be creating out there, look at your inbox. What questions are your buyers, your sellers asking you on a regular basis? You know, create just like how you can create that video about it, create a blog post about it as well. That way, when they call you at late at night or, you know, they're emailing you, I can click and say, here, I wrote something about it. And I would hit send and boom, it's done. And, and I've taken care of it and answered their question instead of having to sit there and type out something for 20 minutes and make sure that I spelled everything right. I've done it one time and it's over and taken care of. So my suggestion, create content that you, you know, have a little bit of the keywords in it, but you don't have to sit in and plague yourself anymore like before. Um, you know, it's more, you know, the, the big factors that Google looks at when it comes to ranking, they look at number of pages of content, how often is the content updated and the number of links pushing back to it. So if you have those three things covered and you're doing it somewhat regularly, you're going to be fine with it in time. Yeah. I used to do that keyword density stuff as well. And it, it used to make the articles, you, you'll find articles like that, that it's almost hard to read like every every other sentence has the phrase living in annapolis maryland or buying a home in annapolis maryland and you'll see um bloggers that they just keep using these keywords and it's awkward to read and so yeah i mean you mentioned three percent keyword density um that's 30 times in a thousand word article yeah and yeah my understanding is i mean the thing is like google's constantly updating their algorithm they come out with some new algorithm all the bloggers start complaining because their articles are no longer ranking. My understanding is like they now they see that as gray hat techniques. You yeah, know, trying, they do. Yeah, trying Google, to Google's smart enough now to know how consumers read. And so if your post is written for like sounding like a robot, they're going to realize this isn't written for consumers and they're going to push it down the list. So you need to make it sound more natural where before you used to be able to just sit there and put in gated homes in Myrtle Beach, real estate, whatever, blah, 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 and put that comment in multiple times. Um, you know, Christina makes a good point there um, with uh, your videos, you know, and that's something that her and I discussed. And, um, you know, it's actually why I'm writing the post now that I'm doing is I've given YouTube time to understand what my video is about. One of the things I used to do, which was not helping me with my YouTube channel, is I would create a video, I'd push it out on a Monday, on Tuesday I'd write the blog post and push that out as well. And then on Wednesday I'm sharing it to 14 Facebook groups and sharing it on Twitter and LinkedIn and Google Plus and everywhere else you can think of. I'm pushing this thing out everywhere just to try to build some traffic on YouTube. And then at the end of the day sitting there going, well, dang it, this ain't doing nothing for me. And so, you know, I, I've kind of after she yelled at me nicely, um, <laughs> kind of, you know, re redid things. And um, I'm seeing the results now come in from it. So, you know, I'll do that. Um, the other thing's true too, um, where if you're going to repurpose your content that you've created, um, you know, and Malcolm, I, I've said this to you a couple times as we've talked over the last few weeks, 
I would create your content first. You, you spend all that money to get a new domain, create a website around just that, something you own and control, and then create the content there. And if you want to repurpose it then, after the fact, onto places like Medium or Active Rain or on your Lawson Group page that's been around for a while to kind of get some backlinks and help build that new one, make sure that before you go about doing it, that that, that post or page has been indexed by Google first. And you can do that by just going in and doing a search for it and making sure that it shows up in the search results um, that Google has found it and indexed it. In the right. beginning, it might take a week or 10 days or two weeks till it shows up. But once you, and that's how you can start to tell how's your domain authority doing. One of the easiest things to do is just set up a Google alert. So I have a Google alert set up for my domain that every time Google finds something about MyrtleBeachHomesBlog.com, I get an alert. And so I know when I create a new post, I'll get that alert usually in a day or two, boom, this page has been indexed. Then if I want to go to Medium or to Active Rain or to where else and repurpose it, I can do it then knowing that it's first index here and Google knows this is the most important on it. These other ones are okay, but this is the one that I need to push to the top of the list. These other ones are just there to help it. Yeah, and so Jeremy's talking about duplicate content here. If I have an audience on LinkedIn and Medium and Active Rain, if I post the same article on all of them, how's Google supposed to know? They're not gonna rank all four articles on the first page of Google. How are they supposed to know which one to rank first? And my understanding from talking to you and a few other people that it's it's whichever one they index first, whichever one they see first. And then there's also a tag called a canonical tag, right? That you can assign saying, this is the main article and I am re-uploading it to another platform. And I have seen on my medium.com when I post an article on there, uh, there's just a little setting I can say, uh, whereas like this article was originally posted at, and it gives me a spot and I just put the URL in there. I'm guessing that's going to create that canonical tag, which says the one on my website is the top priority and that's the one that I really want. Right. Now, you opened up my eyes to a concept called interlinking, right? Um, where you essentially write an article and then uh, like at the bottom you have links to other articles that you've written that are also really useful. And those Google essentially counts those as backlinks, right? Oh yeah. 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 So you can set those up. I mean, it, I would liken it to kind of like the end card on YouTube. Right. You know, I mean, yeah. I mean, really that's what it is. Um, and so you can create those things. Um, I used to use, um, back at, back in the day when I was running my website company, I had, I would have a link at the bottom that was automatically put in every single one of my posts or pages. That was just a link that basically said custom WordPress sites, because that was what I was trying to rank for was building WordPress sites for people. And I dominated it for two and a half, three years as custom WordPress sites. I was all over page one and I had hundreds and hundreds of links because that link was put on the bottom of, it was basically my signature on every single blog post that was out there. And so what I started doing after talking to you is that, you know, I'll write a thousand, 2000 word article about living in a city that I cover. And then at the bottom of it, I have a header like, and it's something like, you may also like these other areas. And then mm -hmm. I just have links to other articles that I've written about similar cities within the same county. And so I have all these articles just kind of interlinking. And it, if somebody does read that and they're interested in that city, they very well may be interested in the city, learning more about the city right next to it. So people may actually click on that. And it's also um, a medium that give you do follow links. So it's also, it's also a good way to send people from medium back to my website if I link to the articles on my website. If you did that in WordPress, there's a plugin, there's several plugins you can use that are called related post plugins and it automatically goes and finds stuff that it, that it realizes is related to the topic and puts them right there. I don't even have to think about it. Perfect. I love it. Um, so my understanding of the Google's algorithm, right? So on YouTube, it looks at your click through rate and then it looks at your audience retention, how long people, how user is on your video for. And then what, how they interact with it. Do they comment? Do they like it? Do they watch another one of your videos? And my understanding is that the Google algorithm today is very similar to that. And what they look at is how long your session time, how long somebody's on your page. And you can actually see this in Google Analytics, your average, I think it's called session time, 
or page time or page time on page or something. And so like mine is like a minute and 30 seconds for my website is the average time they spend on that page. And a couple of the positive, and that's, that's one of the better signals to Google is if they can spend a long time on your page, which is why a lot of people say that you want to make it freaking long, make it a thousand words, 2000 word article so they spend more time on your page. And something that I found really helpful is embedding video on your page. If I can get somebody oh, yeah. to my article about my city and then they watch my 10 minute long video, they're on that page for 10 minutes. And that is a fantastic signal to Google. And I think that's why I've been having a lot of luck at getting my articles to rank because I also have a video about that topic embedded in the top of the article. Um, yeah. So that's, that's kind of my strategy moving forward is that most of the videos that I make, when I create a script for that video, I'm going to take that script and turn it, format it, add some more content, turn it into a good blog post. Um, and I think those two things just work hand in hand, work very well together. Um, now, you were saying that your strategy after talking to Christina is that you don't post the video in your article immediately, right? Well, you I don't post. I just don't post it, post up the article. I'll wait a few weeks and do it. Um, but yeah, the, actually, let me uh, let me do this. I'm going to show you my analytics here for my website. Uh, oh, I got to hit the share button, don't I? Let's go yep. back here and hit share screen. All uh, right, there. Here we go. All right, so let me jump over here to my analytics a minute, and you can see. So one of the things that you have, one of the big factors that Google's looking at nowadays is this bounce rate. Uh, bounce rate is when people come in. They view one thing, they don't click on anything in there, and they leave and go somewhere else, okay? That's kind of like the view time, you know, and, and then quick clicking into your video and clicking right back out and not paying attention to it, staying around at all. Um, so mine is extremely low these days. 11.9%, um, basically 12% is pretty darn good. Um, you know, you can see this is my, my traffic for the last week. Um, to my site and you know on average the consumers that are hitting there are spending time um, a minute and 44 seconds which doesn't seem like a lot but it's huge and you know they're looking at four pages of content um, so they're visiting 1800 pages of content in a week that's huge that, that, I mean that, that's huge that we're getting that I'm doing that well with it um, and if I wanted to I can go in and, and one of the things that I would suggest anyone who's thinking about doing this does is make sure you, once you have your website, if you have a website now, you must have Google Analytics set up. You right. must. And you need to pay attention to it. Because one of the things I used to get all the time, and it would drive me nuts, is people call me and say, oh, well, I need a new website. Mine's not doing well. Or, or I have this website for a while, and, and I just don't think it's working well. I'm like, okay. Well, have you looked at your analytics? What is it doing well for? Uh, I don't know. I don't have that. Okay, how do you know how something is performing if you have nothing set up at all to track it? Right. If you're not looking at anything, how do you know what is and what isn't working? You're taking a shotgun approach kind of like how I was with videos where it's just let me slap whatever I can against the wall and we'll see what sticks and what does. Hey, great, and we'll go with it. And we'll try to make it happen again sometime with some other idea. Uh, let's see what today, uh, let's try this and throw that and see what happens. Um, you know, you gotta pay attention to it. And so you can go in, um, in the back end of your analytics and you can look and see what is the content that people are looking at? What are they following? Um, you know, one of the things that I rank very well for and is doing getting a ton of traffic to my site lately is a blog post that I wrote probably almost two years ago about taxes and how to save on your taxes here in South Carolina and how they compare to other parts of the country. And so that post alone is getting probably a thousand views a month um, of consumers. And here's the thing, people go, well, a thousand views a month, that's not much. But here's the difference between YouTube and your blog. People who come to my blog, the only way they're getting there is by using Google and doing a search for a specific topic and landing on me. They're not just, you know, randomly on YouTube reading, you know, watching a video and it pops up at the end or it shows up in their feed by accident 
or somebody shared it somewhere that that's not happening on my on my blog there most of the people are coming from the search engines i think the last time i checked it was like 80 percent of my traffic is from people doing google search mm -hmm. and, and so going back to your google analytics like yeah that youtube that's just like youtube analytics which you can easily access google analytics you have to set up an account you have to install it on your website but that that data inside there has got me excited because how similar it is to you, the YouTube's algorithm, right? So what you showed us was the bounce rate, right? And that's they come in and they're not interested and they leave. So that means that we have to hook the audience as soon as they get onto your blog post. And you have to find a way to hook them above the fold. So when they first presented with the information. And so what I've been doing is I've been embedding the video near the top of my article. I embed some pictures. I try to have some captivating text to really hook them at the top of the article, just like I do in the YouTube videos. You showed that uh, Google looks at the session time, how long they're on your article or on your website for. That's just like audience retention, right? So again, you have to provide a lot of value and keep it exciting, keep it interesting, and keep them on your website. And then you showed how many pages they're looking at on your on your um, on your uh, your website. That's just like a user session time on Google, and that's why on uh, or on YouTube. And that's why on YouTube, my call to action always is always click right here to watch another video. And that's where the interlinking to other similar articles at the bottom of your blog post comes in. It, so it, it is very similar to the YouTube algorithm today, which has got me really excited for some reason. Um, yeah. you know, I figured out that algorithm. Now I got another algorithm that I can kind of reverse engineer and figure out. Well, and here's the things, you know, I, I, uh, is my screen shown again to you? Uh, no, Oh, I can share it. Here we go. So you can see here when you're looking at this, you can see how these are the, this is the content right now that's that's ranking well for me. And so I look at this on a regular basis and go, okay, this post about understanding taxes when buying a home in Myrtle Beach, that's something really popular. It's created 98 page views in the last eight days or last seven days. You know, it's unique views of 46. People are spending a minute and six reading that article. They're spending time there. Um, you know, and so when I see that, that lets me realize this is something I need to understand and I need to create more on it. And if I go over here to my site and let me just see if I can pull it up here quick. I'll show you the post so you can kind of see how it all goes together. Let's see if I can search Google and find it quick. So, yeah, um, Stuart says, so create the video first, then write a post blog. I'd say that's probably a good, pretty good formula right there is you, you write a script for your video, you publish the video and according to Christina that you want to let your video simmer without really interfering with the YouTube algorithm. Let them have some clean data before you start sending traffic to it. So I think she said, you know, three to four weeks before you embed that video in your blog post. But that's, that's fine. They can give you a little bit of time to turn your script that you wrote for that video into an article, kind of format it, and you can publish the article. According to her, you want to wait a little bit before you embed the video in the um, in the article. Yeah, and so like this one I don't even have a video on, um, and, and it doesn't. It would probably behoove me to take this picture out, go create a blog, a video about it, and let it sit out there and simmer for a while. And I could literally take this post that I have here and basically, and that's probably what I'll do is I might even do this for this week's video, copy and paste this into a Word document and format it out a little bit and create a video around it. Come back in here where I have this picture of the dollar bills, take it out and put it in. But you can see, so this is a post, um, you know, it's about, I think about 15, 1600 words. And all I did is I created stuff, but you'll see then how um, I've got some links in here. So like this one goes to um, one of my buddies. He's up in Pennsylvania where I grew up. He sells real estate. And so that's a link to him. He's happy to get that. And, and that's the kind of links that you want. Uh, but then you'll see as you come down through the post, this is a screenshot of what it would be for taxes up there. Yeah, Here's great. a link that goes to um, a neighborhood page inside my website. So that's helping that page to rank well. This is a screenshot of my taxes for down here. 
And I just kind of then break down and talk about, you know, it's kind of like how you said the other day um, when you noticed on your videos where when the, you talk about a term and you put it on the screen, how you get that boost in, in time watch there and yeah. people spend more time. It's kind of the same thing here where I'm giving out the definition and talking about the different things. I give them the people what they're looking for. Here's a link right over to the county assessor's page where you go to get your taxes reduced, you know, and that you can then do the homestead exemption, right? Here's the link for it. And, you know, then I just went through and when I was writing, writing this blog post, I was like, okay, how do I get a couple more links to some other pages in my site? So here's one I did. For people thinking of retiring to Myrtle Beach, taxes is a question that is definitely on their mind. I recently had this question asked on my video of Plantation Lakes, and this is a link right over to that page in my site, which has the video embedded, and I just screenshot. This is a screenshot right from my YouTube page of the question somebody asked. And so they wanted to know how it worked with fixed income source and knowing the taxes, and so I answered their question. Then I went through and I, uh, to make the article a little longer, I talked about the other types of taxes you pay here. In South Carolina, you pay taxes on your vehicle. So I talked about that a little bit through and then put a contact form at the bottom of the page. And this, this blog post right here, it's hitting on page one of Google. It has to by the amount of traffic that it's getting on a regular basis. Is it thousands of people asking the question every week? No. But if I went for a term like that, I would have a much harder time getting on page one. What people don't realize is if you go back and, and I go into my, you know, here's my analytics and I look, this is on page one about taxes. This is an area, the Golden Mile. That's on page one. This is a new development that I have sold three houses in this development now. Our average price point here is under 200000 and I've sold three three hundred dollars to $350,000 houses in this neighborhood. I outrank DR Horton, the builder, for it. I get people all the time who reach out to me. Talk about leads. I get leads. Hey, uh, can you tell me what lots do you have available to get it? And I'm like, uh, I'll get and before I even respond, I'm calling the guy at DR Horton and saying, hey, which lead, which lots do you have available? And I call them back, and these people think I'm the expert on it. Right. And yeah. I'm outranking them. Um, you know, and so these posts here, this is all content that I've created that is ranking well in generating leads. This one right here, this gated homes, I just sold a $700,000 house because of that one. This one right here generated a $350,000 sale the other day. Um, and so these things are ranking well and bringing traffic to me. It doesn't seem like a ton in a week, you know, 30 to 40. But if I went and pushed this out to a year and then pull up the leads that it's brought me, it definitely works. I'm a single agent. I don't have a huge team. It's more than enough for me to handle on my own. Right. So let me let me show you um, an article that I have that's working pretty well for me as well. So let me come here. So if you just go into Google and you type in living in Annapolis, Maryland, that's my city. Uh, I see 210 um, searches a month according to keywords everywhere. That's probably not accurate. Unfortunately, but if you scroll down, um, like sure, I've got three YouTube videos on the first page of Google for that search term. That's fantastic. That's what we all want. But and that's also side note, this is like a new format that I've noticed Google has been showing videos. But the number one result, so let's say they don't they don't scroll down to see my videos. The number one result is my article that I wrote on this exact topic. So my article is ranking higher than my videos uh, for this search term. And one thing I want to point out here is uh, I have my YouTube videos embedded in this article, but before I ever did that, I had other YouTube videos embedded in here that weren't mine. So here I'm talking about downtown Annapolis, and I embed a video of a drone of downtown Annapolis. Um, down here I talk about the Naval Academy. I found a YouTube video about the Naval Academy. I think down here I talk about a couple of different restaurants. There's the history of Annapolis. You see how long this is. This is um, one of the local restaurants was interviewed on a, a TV show and I embedded that video in there. But I just wanna make the point that it doesn't have to be, and then you can see the links here to the other articles that I've written, but it doesn't have to be your YouTube video. So if somebody's really sat here and watched all these videos and kind of scanned through this, like yeah, they could be on this website for like 10, 15, 20 minutes maybe, um, which is, 
a great signal to YouTube and it's our Google and it's obviously working because it's the number one result. And I have several of that. If you just type in Severna Park, Maryland, let's see where I rank for that. I'm number three. The number three is my article about Severna Park, Maryland with my YouTube video in MetaNet and then a bunch of pictures and a bunch of my content. And then I've got a few call to actions like this, which actually takes them back to my website if they want to see the um, the homes for sale there. But here's here's the thing that I'll say to that, Malcolm. If you go back to your search, the first the 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 domain. I don't know about you, but I know about me. When I'm deciding which one I'm going to click on Google to do, I see where it's dry, directing me to. And if I'm like, eh, it's going to send me to LinkedIn or it's going to send me to Medium or something else. I'm like, is this really an authority? Is this really what I'm looking for? Am I just wasting my time? I'm going to go just like if I saw it was all saying Zillow and this and that and this and that. I'm going to skip those and I'm going to find the one that takes me to something of a local person. So if that that blog and I'll go back and say it again, that blog post was ranking instead of on medium.com on living in Maryland.com or even the Lawson group you're going to get a lot higher click through rate and a lot higher conversion rate. You're doing well having it there. How, I mean, how, how much traffic is that post getting a month? Um, I will pull that up. Let's take a look here. Um, so if I go to medium.com. So uh, my understanding is that another factor of the Google algorithm is the click through rate. And unfortunately we can't see that. But if, if that is in fact, um, all right, so Severna Park, Maryland, I've gotten 763 reads on that in the last 30 days. So in the last 30 days, I've gotten 2,100 views on my articles on medium.com. So and 763 to the Severna Park, Maryland one. Then I got a bunch of duds here. You know, I've been doing a lot of experimenting, 11 romantic restaurants in Annapolis. And that's for how long a period? 30 days. All right, let me uh, just so, so that I can kind of. So here we go. Six things to know before moving to Annapolis, Maryland. Wait, that, can, can that be right? Can that really be 30 days? Maybe that's not 30 days. Did that really get 4,000? No, okay. So maybe I'm confused. It says that you've had in the last 30 days 2,100 views to this and 841 reads, okay? So let me just pull up mine now for the last, let's see, today's the 14th. We're going to go back to September 14th. Yeah, it's hard, it's hard to say exactly, but. So I've had 7,891 page views during that time. Yeah, that's fantastic. I mean, that, uh, that's, you said you have hundreds of pages, right? 500 articles or pages? Yep. I, there's my site has indexed twenty thousand plus pages, yeah. content to be found. Um, a lot of it's automated through the IDX, which is fantastic. I don't have to do a lot with it. But in the last thirty days, I've had seven thousand eight hundred ninety-one page views uh, to my site, which has resulted in fifteen hundred and sixty-five users. Of that fifteen sixty-five. Uh, 1,521 of them are new and has resulted in 1,900 plus sessions during that time. Yeah, that's fantastic and completely free. I mean, people literally pay hundreds of dollars and thousands of dollars a month for that exact same traffic. And you're, you got that organically and it's pretty much on autopilot. You just gotta make, make YouTube videos and make some blog posts every now and then. Exactly, and that's the thing, once you have it, so of that, uh, of that 1,565, 1,168 came from organic search and 271 were from uh, direct, refer direct referral. And then directs basically it was 271 and then social and referrals and email and that kind of stuff sent another about 200 or so in. But 1,100 or you know 70% of it or so came from organic searches yeah that's that's great man that's, that's exactly the type of traffic that i want to start building up on my my um my channel that my that tax post that i was talking about had 529 page views in the last month 
the neighborhood, the parks, the one that I outrank the, the builder at 366. And so, you know, that's sending people to me. And, and here's the thing, the, the, the leads, when I get these people coming to me, what they're doing is they're saying, uh, you know, Mike, one of the guys that I just closed last week in that parks de development, Hey, Jeremy, it's Mike. Um, I'm just wondering, do you have time that maybe you could get together with us today? We want to meet up. Uh, we, we're thinking about buying at the parks, and we saw your video about it on YouTube, and I saw your blog post about it, and we really want to want to work with you. Can you help us buy there? I literally met the guy at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and by 5 p.m., we had written an offer on a $340,000 house. Done. I literally spent five hours with him and had a contract. They know they like, they trust me. They know they like, they trust my website now. They're working with me through and through. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, it's very similar to YouTube. And what's great is, uh, let's say you, for that tax one, if you also made a YouTube video and embedded that at the top of the tax one, it's a way to send um, views to your videos, right? How many of those people would click through your YouTube video and actually go to your YouTube channel and subscribe for more content like that? Yep. Um, you know, I, I mean, I, I, I do think like, like I, I showed, if people don't scroll down to see my YouTube videos on the first page of Google at the bottom of Google, they click on the number one article, they're still watching my YouTube videos. They're still um, checking out my videos, getting me views and, you know, everything else. So, yeah, I love that. Um, so decal. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be posting this interview on my website, YouTubeLeadGen.com. You may be able to find this, this with a blog post with a blog post. Yeah. Um, I actually, if you go to that website, uh, I, I actually just finally got my website up and running there. I went back through my videos that I've made about YouTube and everything, and I had three that I had a really detailed um, script that I wrote out for them. And all three of those, I copy and pasted it as a blog post, and then I went back and kind of formatted it, added a little more content. But I got three really great blog posts on my that website, which I converted from just my script for my YouTube videos. So yeah. like, like you're already doing the work. If you script out a video, you're like 70, 80% of the way to having a blog post is just kind of, yeah, I got to format it a little bit, a little bit more. Exactly. And that that's kind of what I've been doing is, you know, I, I set up a Trello a few months back after you and I discussed it a little bit. And, uh, you know, I threw a whole bunch of ideas in there. And as I have time, then I'm kind of marinating them out and building them out and creating the scripts right there as kind of what I want to say. And now that I have those, it's going to make it much easier. Just grab it, copy, paste it, throw it in, and boom, I've now got a full blog post along with what I'm saying to have it all kind of go together and make a nice, neat package at the end of the day. Yeah, 100%. And I've seen some people say stuff like, oh, just send your YouTube video off to get it transcribed and then just post your transcription as a blog post. I don't think that really – it's not a great user experience. I've seen people do that, and I, I think it's just kind of cheap and – Mm -mm. They don't need the same thing over again. They need something different. You got to give them different parts. You can share some of the main points of it and have that same stuff, but you need to either expand it out or yeah. condense it down or do those things. And uh, I wanted to answer. He uh, Dekel asked, how are you following up with leads? That would be great to keep up with. How do I do it? Okay, so th this, is th this is my secret sauce for that. I have them all in an automated drip campaign. When the people hit my website and they fill out a form, they automatically get put into it. They're getting that instantly, and it keeps up with them for three years. So everybody's getting touched for up to three years. The second thing I'm doing is the minute I have a chance and I'm, I'm sitting at my desk or if I'm at home, I'm grabbing this whiteboard. There's a reason I keep this whiteboard right by my desk. It's not just for happenstance. It's so that when somebody registers on my site, I grab this, I write their name. Hey, Malcolm, on it. And I'm going to send them a bomb bomb video instantly. And it's going to be this standing here, me waving and smiling at them. And it's going to be, hey, Malcolm, thanks for it. Wanted to send a quick message to you today. Say thanks for registering on the website a few minutes ago. Wanted to let you know I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Um, feel free to reach out to me. My phone number is down below here. You can call me, text me. You know, if you want to know information about what's the HOA fees, what does it include, or you know, what kind of things are in the area to do, or even just where's a great place to get a burger, feel free to reach out to me. We'd love to talk to you. Have a great day. Bye. And it's a quick 45 second or less video. They see the whiteboard with their name on it, 
those people are going to click on it. And that differentiates me from everyone else around. Because here's the reality, people. When somebody comes to your site, you're not the only agent that they're talking to. I know it's shocking to say that, but you're not the only agent that they've connected with. They've talked to other agents and they've registered on a half dozen other different websites at some point. And so creating that bomb bomb video and sending it to them has set me apart over and over and over because people will say it. They'll say, man, you know, I, I had talked to this other agent before in this and I just saw that video and I connected with you right away, Jeremy, your personality. And you're the only one who did something like that. And that's why we want to work with you. Yeah, I love that, man. Um, yeah, I don't really use Bomb Bomb. I probably should, but um, yeah, I just never. I had some free version of something similar to it, and I just never really used it. But I could definitely see that be really effective. Uh, so, do you write all your own articles, or do you have you ever hired somebody to write articles for you? No, I've not hired someone. Um, I have had a few guest posts come in from time to time. And here's the thing. Once your site starts to rank well, people will then want to reach out to you because they want to get the backlink from your site. And so you have to then become very particular and very cautious as to who you allow in. Um, but I do from time to time have people who will write a guest post for me, um, you know, and just create something. You know, I had a, a lawn company that wanted to get some some backlinks and stuff for their products. I was like, hey, it's some good information on taking care of your lawn in the springtime and in the summer. I'll let those go through. Um, I'd love to find somebody to get like how you were talking to me right before we got on here that can create that local content. Um, I've tried a couple times to hire somebody um, from my local colleges or high school or um, the best people for this kind of work I've been told are the stay at home moms Yeah, that, yeah. you know, they're they're stuck at home with kids. Well, the kids still are taking naps during the day and they've got two hours to do it where in that time they could sit down and, you know, knock out a thousand word article for me, you know, and pay them 15 you know bucks or 20 bucks or whatever. And boom, I've got a beautiful post. I throw some pictures in it, set it out there, then take it, format it into a video, boom, and have that as well. Yeah. So I, um, I'm trying to find some leverage, you know, I'm, I do too much stuff. So I'm trying to find some leverage and I started hiring somebody on upwork.com originally to write some articles for me. And what's cool about Upwork is that you can search for somebody within your state. So they're at least somewhat familiar with, you know, if you're making content about your state and uh, I pay her 15 bucks an hour and I like doing it hourly because some articles may only take an hour for her to write some articles, for a more competitive keyword, I may want two or 3,000 words, and it may take her five hours to write. And I don't want – some people will say, oh, I'll write an article for you know a fixed rate. But the problem with that is like they're going to – I don't know. I'm just afraid. I just Some articles I need to be bigger and more time invested than other articles. Well, and you want, you want to get stuff that is unique to you that is in depth you know I, I had a good buddy jason who's out in fresno california and uh he has hired several people to create content for him he has one person that all their job is to co cover high school sports and oh, they cool. go and write about what's happening at the high school you know games and those things and another person that they're all about right all they do is write about restaurants opening and local businesses and so you know you can find people for those types of things um to do it um, I've just not had much success here um, locally, but um, I'm going to, I realize it's almost 1230. We probably need to get going, don't we? I, I could go another hour, man. I, we haven't well, even. We'll do it again. We can do All it right. again. This is part one. I'm going to go implement some of the stuff that we talked about today, and then we'll come back and do another, another follow-up uh, Zoom call like this, or not Zoom call, live stream. All right, man. Well, thanks so much for masterminding with me. I, I learned a good bit, and I, I think uh, we got a lot of positive comments here. I think a lot of other people learned a good bit about blogging as well. Yeah, uh, it was fun. You know, it's something I'm passionate about doing, and it works well for me. I, I right now in my business, I'm seeing two to three leads per week from my blog, from my website. You know, I'm now starting to sprinkle in a little bit of those YouTube leads with it as well, and you know, it keeps me busy for sure. Yeah. And like the truth is people say, oh, we saw your YouTube videos. 
I don't really know if they discovered me from my YouTube videos or if they discovered my blog posts, which had my YouTube videos in them. So really like blogging and YouTube, I'm kind of mixing those two. So I kind of count those leads as pretty much the same source. I just call them YouTube leads. Yep. But um, okay, everybody. Thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, this was fun and we'll have to do it again sometime.